Okay, hey everyone, welcome back to the Japan Archive. It's gonna be a bonus that we're recording today, a short bonus episode. Uh, we're gonna call this one The Courtesan's Abyss, which kind of sounds ominous, Very no? Ominous, yeah. <laughs> um, but how are you doing, Heather, today? I know we've been talking for a while before we hit record, but we always start by asking how you're doing. I'm, I'm, I'm always worried to say this, but I'm doing pretty good, feeling really good. I got my second vaccine this weekend and then promptly got side effects, but they didn't last too long. They were not, not fun, but I got the second vaccine and in a couple weeks fully inoculated. So that's a huge relief to get that done. Both of us, the professor and I got that done. So, <sighs> oh, same day. That's good. Yeah, that was, that was, that was a gamble. That was a huge gamble for us to both do it the same day, but thank goodness I was the only one that got knocked out with side effects and he was fine. So that's me back to normal, feeling pretty good. So I, I think today's topic I once, this is an article we also have on the website and I think I sent it to you once before and you read it, but it was a, many, many moons ago, I think, at this point. So can you remember much of it? Oh, oh, no, no. I, maybe if you start talking, it might ring a bell. But mm. at this point, the exact contents remain a mystery to me at this moment. The event, like I said, bonus episode, it will be short. There's not much of the story to it. But this event happened in Yamanashi Prefecture and it's centered around a waterfall and the gorge beneath it and if you're wanting a more well if you're wanting a kind of timeline for this we're talking around the Sengoku period so about the 1570s so quite a while back in fact, I think this was probably during when Yasuke was in Japan. It was around that time. Because at the very least, the man who is kind of involved in this story did have dealings with Oda Nobunaga. Oh. And as we know, um, Yasuke was around for the end of Nobunaga's life. Hmm. It's around the 1570s, and it involves the clan known as the Takeda clan. And we actually did talk about them on the last Yasuke episode. Briefly, we mentioned one of them called Takeda Katsuyori, who is actually the son of the guy we're going to briefly mention in today's episode. So yeah, this definitely happened around the time Yasuke was in Japan, just in a different area of Japan in Yamanashi Prefecture. The short story goes that during the Sengoku period, I think we we saw it a lot during the Yasuke episodes. It was a time when there was a lot of fighting, a lot of wars going on between the clans, and obviously Nobunaga was trying to unify that and bring it to an end. But the Takeda clan, in more specifically, they had a secret method to get lots of money for their battles and all their espionage exploits. And in essence, they had a secret gold mine that no one knew about in the Kurokawa Kinzan mountain. They didn't specifically use the gold just for their war exploits. We do know that they used a lot of it to give money to shrines, obviously to get the blessings of the gods, but it's also known that they used to bury lots of it in the foothills. They would hide their gold for future use in case they needed it. I'm not sure if the gold was ever found or if we just know they hid it but if there's potentially gold in them their foothills i might <laughs> have to go on a little digging holiday one day but yes so the gold mining peaked during the time of takeda shingen the father of katsuyori we just mentioned and he also used all of this gold they were getting from their mines to build a large spy network and this spy network used a lot of female ninja known as Kunoichi. Oh. 
Now, these women were very skilled at pretending to be people they were not, so they would pose as anything from holy women, servants, to even prostitutes who would then work for his rivals, even work for his allies, and basically keep him informed of everything that was going on at the time. Now, the secret mind, of course, employed many men, and they also employed 55 courtesans who would entertain the men on their downtime. And eventually, you know, my, a mine doesn't last forever and it did run dry. And so a decision was made to close the mine. But of course, they, well, doesn't make sense to me. If the mine has run dry and there's no more use to it, I suppose there would be no reason to keep it a secret. However, the Takeda clan wanted to keep the mine's location a secret, and it was decided that the 55 courtesans may need to have been gotten rid of because they may have learned of the mine's location from the men that they were entertaining on an evening. And potentially, if some of them were part of the female ninja, the Kuno Ichi, they may have also just found out about the mines themselves because they were good at espionage and finding out secrets. So what happened was, to celebrate the closing of the mine and to thank everyone for their service, a giant wooden platform was constructed and suspended over the waterfall and the gorge. The 55 women uh, being asked to get up on the stage and do a performance to, well, they were to practice a performance ready for the coming evening so that they could throw a party to thank everyone for their good work. As they continued to practice, the Takeda men decided to destroy the platform, destroy the supports underneath the platform, which then caused all the women to fall to their deaths into the gorge. The bodies were eventually retrieved from a bend further down in the gorge, but that is the short tale of the courtesan's abyss and what befell those who, you know, they were just there to serve the Takeda men on their downtime. They, I personally don't think they would have known about the mine, but it was decided that they all needed to be killed to keep the secret of the Takeda's gold mine. Now I remember this story. So now it's good. all coming back to you. Yes. Yes. That's absolutely horrible. Absolutely horrible. Oh, such a, uh, yeah, it, the, the gold mine was, even if someone was going into, I guess they, yeah, I don't understand the logic of why. I, I don't, I don't get it. If the mine was still in use, then it makes, well, it doesn't make sense, but it makes sense in a way that you wouldn't want the story to get out about what you have. But the mm. mine had run dry, there was nothing left, so why would it hurt if people found out the truth? Mm -hmm. maybe maybe people would have complained and said you should have been sharing the gold perhaps the gold should have gone to whoever the Takeda clan was in service to or maybe Nobunaga would have demanded he should have been sharing the gold with him which might be the reason why they kept it secret but again I, you can't be we can't be too sure we just don't have the records to explain why but of course there must have been some records because we know that it existed Hmm. Maybe too that. Well, did everyone know that the Takedas had gold, or did, was that just completely, just the Takedas knew that they had access to a gold mine? Um, just the clan itself, and obviously the people who worked for them would have known. Because they may have just wanted to hide the fact they even had gold. Because yeah, like you said, they they would probably have to give mo more of it to. The, the shogun in their area. Was there shogun during that time period? Seven, 1730s had shoguns, right? Or at least the leader of the area. Oh man. And this is this is a a gap in our knowledge here because we haven't covered show the shogunates. There were several shogunates throughout Japan, like during the time period. So there would have been someone, but wasn't Nobunaga? unifying to become a shogun and ultimately his child became a shogun but if there was someone in higher up they would have demanded a cut of the gold true 
Mm. But also maybe other people would have wanted a cut anyway, because it's like, oh, I'm your ally. Why weren't you sharing your gold with me so we could both fight together and be stronger? True. Or someone might come and steal it because they're talking about some, some ninjas coming up and uh, stealing your gold away. Mm, so very you true. Have gold. You're going to come come knocking at your door. But yeah, there you go, Heather. It's a very short footnote in history, but I think it's one that's interesting nonetheless. I I haven't found it mentioned anywhere except in one book. And on the internet, it's mostly mentioned only in Japanese. So oh. yeah, I wanted to tell it today. Is there any kind of commemoration at that area? Like any kind of marker or anything for that the, the platform and the... There is a little sign that tells you where you are and what you did. Uh, what what you did. What you did, Heather. No. There's a little sign that explains what happened there and why and how. But to actually access the place, it's super difficult. It's in the middle of nowhere. Oh. I think it's I think it's next to a, f- a freeway. Like in the mountains. Like there's no parking there. There's no easy place for you to just stop and go to the site. There are there are routes to it if you do manage to park up somewhere, but it's not easily accessible. It's not a place people would visit, hmm. which is probably why a lot of people also don't know about it. Yeah, good point. I do wonder, so this was included in a book on Yure, on Japanese ghosts. So I do wonder if it is a haunted place and if sightings of the courtesans were see- have been seen over the years. Could imagine that. Mm. But yeah, there we go. That is my short uh, bonus for you today. I think we timed it quite well because our little friend is waking up again now. Timed perfectly. I hope you enjoyed it. That's a weird thing to say when it's about everyone dying, but yeah. (laughs) I enjoy the fact that you found this interesting bit of history and shared it with us. Ah, okay. I'll take that. (laughs) (laughs) All right, Heather. Well, do you have anything else to say today? I'm sure I do, but I sure can't think of it. (laughs) Thank you. No worries. All right, guys. Well, we will speak to you next time. Matane. Matane.